In this episode, we're going to build a simple pagination feature using Firebase and the Angular Fire 2 package. This solution allows the user to click a next or previous button to navigate through a Firebase list observable. The benefit of this approach is that it can be applied to a data set of any size, but the drawback is that it's impossible to really implement page numbers for pagination. In the database, we have a series of comments nested under their associated post ID. Let's start by retrieving a Firebase list observable from the service. First, we import the Angular Fire database, and then we build a function that will take a post ID, an offset, which is the number of comments we want to retrieve, and a start key, which is where we'll start the actual query. In Firebase, we can't use a numeric offset like you would in a SQL database, so we keep track of the key and use that as the offset point for each query. The key for the next page is determined by grabbing one extra comment from the database, and we use that comment's key as the offset point for the following page. Now we can start building the component. In the template, we're going to loop through a list of comments, but notice we're not using the async pipe because we're actually going to unwrap the observable in the component's TypeScript. We also had a couple buttons just for navigating between the next and previous pages. We also want to disable these buttons if there isn't a next or a previous page to navigate to. In the TypeScript, we start by injecting the comment service, and we also import Lodash, which we'll be using to do a lot of the array operations in this implementation. The comments variable will hold the actual comments from the observable. The offset will be the number of comments we display on each page. The next key is where we offset the actual database query, and the previous keys will be a running list of every key for the previous page. Now we create another function to retrieve the comments, and we'll start by subscribing to the observable from the service. When we pass it an undefined key, it'll just pull the very first page from the database. The emitted value is going to be an array of comments. We'll go ahead and slice the array with the first two comments to show to the user, and then the third comment will be the offset for the next page. And if that comment doesn't exist, then we'll just disable the button in the actual template. We're using the lodash get function to call this key without raising an error if it doesn't actually exist. Now we can run this function with ng on init and that'll populate the first page of comments. We also use it in our next page function, but this time we pass it the key for the next page. So at this point we can navigate forward, but the tricky part is going backwards. Anytime the next page function is triggered, we save the current key in an array. It's only when the user starts going backwards that we start popping off the last element that was added to this array, similar to a stack data structure. We know the user is back on the first page once the array is empty. After we update the previous keys array, we can then load the comments for that page. If we go back to the app, now we can see we can navigate through the comments using the next and previous buttons, and they're disabled when we reach the end or the beginning of the list. If you want to learn more about pagination and different possible implementations, check out the link in the description. That's it for this episode. If you found the video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com. For just a few bucks a month, you'll get access to exclusive content as well as free one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.